Town Moderator, I would like to call the special town meeting November 29th, 2022, to order at 7.30, and ask the town clerk to read the official greeting, please. Pursuant to the within article, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Whateley by posting up attested copies of the same of the transfers at the transfer station, post office, and S.W. Dickinson Library and Whateley Town offices in said town seven days at least before the date of this meeting as within directive. Signed by Constable Thomas Mahar, dated November 10th, 2022. Thank you, and let me say thank you to so many residents of Waitley for heeding that warning and proceeding forthwith to this uh, location. Um, there's several items on this special town meeting warrant. I'd like to just uh, give you a heads up on why each of them are here, what kind of and so the first one of these is involved the Community Preservation Act. And we vote a certain amount to put into that fund each year, but any transfer out of that requires a vote. Um, and so the first article deals with that. The other two involve transfers of funds from one line item to another, in this case from free cash, and therefore require a vote. Uh, the fourth one involves a change in fees. The fees were voted upon at the town meeting, um, the annual town meeting we had, and this is an opportunity to update that fee. Um, the remaining ones have to do with stabilization funds, and stabilization funds, again, there's a certain amount allocated, and to move money in or out of those requires a vote. What differs there is the vote requires, a, that it requires a two-thirds vote for actions involving the stabilization fund. The remaining, the preceding ones, are only gonna require a majority. Now, in your handout, you should have the motions, and you should also have an amendment to the first one. Uh, the way this works is that we first need to move the first mo motion as originally written and put it on the floor, and then I can entertain amendments to that motion, uh, which I will do at that time. So, do we have a someone who will move the first start? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote pursuant to general law chapter 44b to appropriate and transfer the sum of thirty-eight thousand dollars from the community preservation fund as follows eighteen thousand dollars from the community preservation fund historic preservation fund and twenty thousand dollars from the community preservation fund unreserved fund balance for window restoration at First Congregational Church, Waitley, 177 Chestnut Lane Road, with such funding to be subject to a 20-year grant agreement requiring compatibility with the U.S. Secretary of the Interior's standards for the treatment of historic properties with guidelines for preserving, rehabilitating, restoring, and restructuring historic buildings, 36 CFR 67 and a town purchase right of first refusal in the event of a future sale. Second. Is there a second? And I think restructuring is actually re reconstructing. Okay. Restoring and reconstructing yes. historic buildings. Thank you. All right, so this is now up for discussion and uh, debate. Uh, first, I would like to see if there are any motions that would like to be made regarding this. Uh, yes, Donna. Wiley, please, yes. on behalf of the, communica the communication, the <laughs> community preservation fund. Um, <clears throat> on behalf of the community preservation committee. Right, committee, um, sorry. I'd like to propose an amendment, and just so that everyone knows, it's simply that some of the uh, requirements that the CPC voted to um, recommend uh, were left out of the uh, original article. So I'll see if I can. I'm willing to waive reading of the amendment if everyone will accept it as written. Could I simply, though, explain? Yes, absolutely. That, sorry, <clears throat> I talked with my family too much over Thanksgiving weekend. Um, that the major uh, omission is that we are recommending that should the windows be altered in any way incompatible with historic preservation guidelines or removed, in that 20 year period that whoever owns the building now would be required to pay the $38,000 back to the town. 
All right, so we have heard the amendment. It needs a second. Second. And now we, what, what happens now is we have a discussion and a debate on the amendment. At some point, someone can propose to call the question. Do we have a vote on that? If that passes, it replaces the original part. So are there any uh, questions? Yes, please. Um, so I would love some clarification on Section 5C5 from the Community Preservation Fund General Law, which says the antitrust amendment to the Massachusetts Constitution <laughs> states that um, no grant, appropriation, or use of public money shall be made or authorized by the Commonwealth for the purpose of maintaining or aiding any religious undertaking which is not publicly owned and under the exclusive control, order, and supervision of public officers or public agents authorized by the Commonwealth or federal authority. And no such grant shall be made or authorized for the purpose of maintaining or aiding any church religious denomination or society. So would somebody be able to explain how the proposed amendment doesn't contradict this? Uh, so the chair recognizes the line. Um, I, I can explain it um, in general terms. Uh, since that law was passed, which was about 15 years ago, um, a court case was brought in the state of Massachusetts, I believe that it was in Acton, um, about a proposed grant to a church. And the Supreme Court of the state ruled that, actually what they did was to elaborate, that as long as the historic components of the, of the building did not include any religious imagery, um, that a grant, that CPA money could be used for grants to religious organizations. Um, and actually, so far, uh, it's between 60 and 65 towns have made such grants since to religious that, organizations. Since that case? Since, since that case, I just said that. Um, so, um, and the other thing that you should know is that we were, we, the Community Preservation Committee, we're very much aware of this, and um, Brian, on our behalf, asked town council to look at the proposal before we went through our review, and he did, and said that it was fine. Brian, have I left anything out? <coughs> no, that's correct. The, the town yeah. has an opinion from it's a good question. Law. It's town council that, that this appropriation, if it were to be approved, would not go against the anti aid amendment. Thank you. All right. So I think I've neglected to ask you when you do pose a question to stand up, identify yourself, if you would please there. Uh, but are there, has that answered all of the questions that you have? <coughs> are there other questions or discussion about this item? We're discussing the amendment now. Not the yes, proposal. that's right, about this amendment. If not, I would proceed to move to a vote. If you, you're voting, whether to replace the original article with the written amendment as proposed and explained. If so, all in favor, please raise your cards. All opposed, the amendment carries. Uh, we now have to move to um, a vote of the amended article. What we have done now is, have done so far, is move to replace the original with this. So now there's another opportunity for discussion or question for Seeing none, you are now voting whether to vote in favor of the amended article uh, one as, as presented. All in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, by a majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to transfer from fiscal year 2022 free cash the sum of $1,391 to pay for additional operating expenses at the S. White Dickinson Memorial Library. Second. 
The motion has been moved and second is open on the floor for discussion, questions, debate. Seeing none, I would like to move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 2, please raise your cards. Anyone opposed? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $3,464 from fiscal year 2022 free cash to pay for the costs of accessibility improvements to the S. White Dickinson Memorial Library, including, but not limited to, construction administration services. Second. There's been a motion and second. This article is now up for discussion. Are any questions or requests for clarification? If not, let's move to a vote, please. All those in favor of Article 3, raise your hand. Cards. Thank you. Um, all opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to raise the opening grade fee from $650 to $750 per opening for casket burials. Second. All right, so the article has been moved and second, proposing a great increase in the cost of the fee for opening graves. Um, any discussion, questions, objections to puns? Neil Abram, Cemetery Commissioner. <clears throat> I'd just like to be sure everyone understands why we're bringing this forward and it is because this is a fee for a service not provided by town employees but one which is provided by a contractor and the contractor has told us that our fee is substantially below the fee that was paid to them for opening graves in other neighboring towns and therefore they started billing us the higher amount. And so it is not a change in a fee for employee services. And I have, we, cemetery commissioners, have asked Brian to explore whether such a charge should be removed in the future from the list of fees because it is, as I say, not a fee paid for employee services, but is the contractor's cost and that we should instead negotiate a contract with a contractor with limits on when uh, increases can be allowed in the future. But for now, this is what we're being billed, but because we voted the lower fee, we can only bill families the lower fee, and we are draining reserve funds of the Cemetery Commission to pay the difference. And so we're asking to raise the fee at this point so that we, in the future, may bill the contractors build fee to the families um, that wish to have graves open for casket burials. Thank you for that very comprehensive uh, explanation. Is there anyone who needs to dig deeper on this issue? No. Okay. Six feet. <laughs> then uh, I would like to move Article 4 for a vote, please. All those in favor, raise your cards. All opposed? No article passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $7,869 from the Vehicle Stabilization Fund to pay for the purchase of a new hybrid police cruiser for the police department. I'll second. Now this one involves a stabilization fund, so as we were discussing earlier, it requires a two-thirds vote. It's been moved and seconded, and it's open for discussion, questions, clarification. Seeing none, we will proceed to a vote. Article 5, all in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? Appears to have passed unanimously, therefore by two-thirds. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote, pursuant to Chapter 40, Section 5B of the Massachusetts General Laws, to establish a special, uh, special purpose stabilization fund for money received from judgments or settlements in litigation or claims against opioid manufacturers or distributors, parentheses, opioid stabilization fund, close parentheses, and determine how the money from such fund may be spent. 
and further to see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of the fourth chapter, fourth paragraph of chapter 40, section 5B of the Massachusetts General Laws and further to see if the town will vote to dedicate all or a percentage which may not be less than 25% of money received from judgments or settlements in litigation or claims against opioid manufacturers or distributors to the special purpose stabilization fund established under this article. Effective for fiscal year 2023, beginning on July 1st, 2022, and further to dedicate 100% of the money received from judgments or settlements in litigation or claims against opioid manufacturers or distributors to said opioid stabilization fund. Second. So the article has been moved and seconded. I wonder if there's a representative of the select board who would like to explain the, uh, the rationale behind the article. Or Brian. Or, yeah, or Brian. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a stab and then we'll let Brian <laughs> clean up behind me. Um, and we may be receiving settlement money from opioid lawsuits. Um, there's restrictions on what you can use that money for. So if it just gets tossed into the general fund, it's a little murky as to whether we're using those funds appropriately. So the law allows us to make a separate fund for it. It makes it clear that when we're spending that money, we're spending it on things that we're allowed to. That kind of protects us from being sued by somebody saying, hey, you used that money for the wrong thing. What did I miss? That's about it. It's simply an accounting mechanism yeah. for, the, for the receipt yeah. of the funds. And yeah. the, it's useful when the, the revenue stream that the town receives is restricted. Um, it's easier to put these into separate stabilization accounts. Um, and that's the same explanation for the, for the next article, just insert cannabis. For transparency. Yeah. <coughs> Those are um, further questions or discussion, debate on this issue. If not, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor for Article 6, please raise your cards. All opposed? Uh, the motion carries unanimously. Two thirds vote requirement has been passed. Okay. Another one. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to establish a new cannabis impact fee stabilization fund. And further, to see if the town will vote to accept the fourth paragraph of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, which allows the dedication without further appropriation of all or a percentage <coughs> not less than 25% of the particular fees, charges, or receipts to a stabilization fund established under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, to be effective for the fiscal year <coughs> beginning on July 1st, 2022, and further to dedicate 100% of the community impact fees by marijuana establishments operating within the town collected under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 94G, Section 3, to said cannabis impact fees stabilization fund established under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40, Section 5B, effective for fiscal year 2023, beginning July 1st, 2022. All second. So moved and second, again, it requires a two-thirds vote. Are there any <coughs> questions, discussion? Well, let's move to a vote, please. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? In opposition, passes unanimously. Please register the two thirds vote. Satisfied. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, raise your card. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for coming.